Bienvenidos, esto es Art Talks. Yo soy Marily Torres y el día de hoy les presento a Sally Ann Ashley. Sally Ann tiene una infinidad de exposiciones en Reino Unido. Es talentosísima artista inglesa y hoy nos presenta algunas de sus obras, así como también nos platica un poquito acerca de su inspiración, su proceso creativo, cómo se desarrolla, qué le gusta leer, cómo imprime su esencia a través del de uso de pinturas, capas en textiles, eh, collage, etc. También nos cuenta un poquito su historia acerca de cómo estos textiles llegan a su vida cuando empezó su primer emprendimiento a los 20 años con una marca de ropa. Hey, Sally, no les cuento más. Espero que lo disfruten. Gracias por estar Para mí es un placer porque me gusta tu trabajo. Vi tu trabajo desde el principio y me gusta mucho. Y por supuesto, estoy muy honrado de you are joining us today. How are you, Sally? Ah, <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I'm delighted that you asked me to be here. Um, so yes, I'm really well, thank you, and uh, excited to chat to you about my work. Excellent, thanks. Thanks for giving us uh, this time. I guess uh, from university, I studied, it was kind of a fine arts and textiles degree, um, and it was about pushing boundaries within in textiles. So we covered a lot of Um, areas in it, uh, hand embroidery, machine embroidery, uh, weaving, uh, lots of different um, textile uh, techniques. And then in my, I, I guess I just really love fabrics. I love putting different fabrics together, the different patterns, different colors and textures. Um, and I guess that led to in my early 20s, I had a clothes making business with a friend. Um, and again, we were like mismatching fabrics together to create the clothing. And I've never really lost my love for the fabrics, I guess. So um, I've tried over the years to incorporate it more with my painting, um, and I'm still trying to incorporate it. Uh, so I guess now, what I on areas like this, I don't know if this you can see this here. So this is a big patch of fabric here mm -hmm. and it's been um so i would stitch onto the fabric first or embroider a uh, hand or, or with the sewing machine and then i'd apply the if i'm working on um like hard panel mm -hmm. i can't stitch into it so mm -hmm. i have to apply it on and um yep yeah, so i i try to incorporate it it's quite difficult because it can look very stuck on So it's, mm -hmm. you have to really blend in the paint around it and build up like what's either yeah. side of it. So it's definitely a work in progress. <laughs> um, but when I work on, um, quite an interesting point actually, when I work on canvas okay. and not, not panel, not hard. I like to, I like, I like to make my own canvases out of fabrics first. So I would um, like stitch some fabrics together and then paint on them and then stretch them around the stretcher bars so it makes mm -hmm. a canvas. And that way you can, the fabric can become part of the painting. Yeah. Um, does that make sense? Yes, completely. <laughs> yeah. completely. I haven't got any to hand actually. Ah, oh, it's okay. Um, I can search on your on your website or some. Uh, oh, mm. if then if you find it's something, then then I can put it here. Then. Yeah, there are some further down on my Instagram feed. There are some further down. I normally this is my um, painting wall, and I either you know hook things on with this, or I can um, attach fabrics uh -huh. and work directly on the fabrics. Excellent. So. <laughs> Tell us about your creative process, like how you mix all your ideas or when the inspiration comes, if you saw it, if you feel it, and it's uh, more emotional, how you start? <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm really disciplined with my practice now, so I know longer wait for the inspiration to come. I make sure I show up in my studio and usually if I'm in my studio, something will happen, um, whether I'm sort of in the mood or, or not, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, 
sometimes it's I've been thinking of things and then they'll eventually come to form of how I might go about something um I often work well I always work in a series um because for me it enables me to um, explore an idea further um if I'm thinking of many things I can't put them all onto one piece you know so Mm -hmm. I would spread that idea out over you know six twelve pieces or, or something you can see here there's like six will be painted together if they're on little panels or um and i'll start with um usually mark making is a really big um element for me in my work and i like in the first layers whether it's working on a panel or on canvas I'm very free, Um, even though I might be thinking of an idea, a loose idea somewhere, I I try not to let that be um, too apparent when I'm first starting because I like just everything to go out on the canvas. I'm not worrying about colour, I'm not worrying about composition. I'm I'm just being very loose with my marks and very free. Um, So then it's a case of sort of building from there um i might put some collage elements in um and it's it's really just a play on marks collage color pattern just sort of bringing everything together um until i start to feel that i've got enough ground there to work on top of um So then something might start coming through an area that's looking, you know, I might think, oh, I really like what's going on there. And then I can start responding to that part. Um, But I try not to get too attached too soon um, because I know that, uh, like, there's more to come. When you start building layers, um, more interesting things happen. So I try not to get too attached to any part too quickly (laughs) (laughs) and you said something really really interesting about like um yes you work and then also it's not like a you know just hope that uh, the inspiration brings you you know you started and then you you're getting this flow you know and then you create these wonderful pieces and uh, in in that sense no, because for me, I thought, yes, you know, like the difference between an, an artist are uh, people who likes just art and do and sometimes it's that, you know, when you become professional, you work as a professional, you no? Know? So yes, inspire, we come, but need to find us or need to find us working. In. So, you know, that sense, um, how do you start with this plan? No, like I, I start to make a plan or in the beginning some idea and then you work on it during all the process or make some notes because I do some notes like mm, this here and did that and then I put a lot maybe all together and maybe I use it in that piece or maybe in another. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where my notebook is. I, I mean, I'm, I must have a hundred notebooks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, organizing but I usually have um I'll start making some notes uh, you know about something it's usually something that's happening in my life um something that I'm responding to a feeling or an emotion might spark from that something something in a relationship something in your family or a conversation or you know something you have an emotional response to and I'll start making loose notes about that and maybe attaching some colors to it how that could work and um and then I guess so, I mean it's hard to say it often starts like that but I'm, if it doesn't start like that and I just start with marks um I, I, I'll tell you this because it, it's been quite interesting for me to to learn about myself um as you go along the creative process and keep just continue and continue to paint you start to see um, things coming through that are repetitive so I started to notice um, across maybe I don't know 20 paintings similar marks that would come um, and 
it wasn't until I stood back and saw this, oh, it happened there, it happened there, it happened there. And then I start to piece together what does that mean for me? Um, so sometimes it's a bit of a reverse. Um, it's not that I start with the idea, it's that I might just paint and then that almost um, tells me something, you know. Now I keep seeing this certain colour or mark and so then it's a, a case of me exploring what does that mean um, and I often then it's almost like it gives me a little bit of a thread to go on then and I can start forming that idea to be a bit stronger into maybe more of a narrative that I can bring out more and develop. Does uh -huh. that make sense? Do you see? And a good thing to do um, with, with this that I found really uh, helpful i keep um it's like this is like a a, a vision like your mark making becomes your personal visual language um, mm -hmm. um, of your composition in, in paint um so i started to build uh, i don't know if you can see this very clearly it's like a mark making journal um okay. so you can start you start to take note of the marks that become more apparent in your work um, and they just become very personal to you which obviously means the work is then really unique um, and I, I guess in my work that you see a lot of these curves that go up mm -hmm. or uh, quite um, sort of enclosed shapes uh, I speak a lot about it in my uh, stories in, in, in Instagram um, and they're quite personal you know I can relate them back to really personal things um, so yeah it's, it's really fascinating to kind of uh, assess your own work in a way and really look at your marks that you're making and, and why they're coming through mm -hmm. it's been interesting for me anyway <laughs> how you discovered your style like uh, when you start work in art of course, you experiment at different techniques, you know? And then how you finish, uh, or it's not finished, that's not the word, because I, I really believe in evolution. So how you take us as a part of you, uh, to, uh, you know, the tools to share your, your personal stories. Like how do you start to, pick this and then pick the other and then finish in this in this work as a style no because I, I saw and I really like that you know you have a, this kind of a line yeah um, I guess it's just it's really it's really going deep into your practice and identifying what what it is you really really like in your own work mm -hmm. um because we even from a very young age um even in in with children and childhood you you're drawn to certain things um a certain color you like or yeah we might collect things, objects or shapes that we particularly are drawn to um mm -hmm. and i think even in my very early work I didn't really understand what it was. Uh, I'd never really heard of intuitive painting um, and this approach or style. And I just thought they were my scribbles or doodles. And, you know, you don't really, I didn't pay all that much attention. But I think from very early on, if I look back, the things that show in my work now are starting to come round again and come through. So they are just very personal to me and I think it's just been I guess you grow in confidence that that is my style or my work and you just have to sort of go with that because you can't you can't be any other really um if that's what naturally comes out of you I think it's important to to go with it and um just yeah really have uh i suppose faith in yourself it's it's the trust in yourself um and as well you know you build up there's lots of things over the years that i've built up in terms of principles and what's going to make my work stronger but those again you can sort of weave into your own way of working um but yeah i definitely say even now i still go through a process 
um i'm always going through it of what i really like in the work um mm. and that's what will eventually come through at the end so i might be focusing on uh really big dense shapes um as opposed to lots of scribbly lines or i don't want many scribbly lines i just so it's about what what am i trying to say in the painting what's the most important thing for me message that i'm trying to give across so yeah i'd say um identifying what you really 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 like <laughs> and going with that yes and as, as you say it came from your childhood you know it came with the time so certain things that you repeat you no know, or you use like this and then maybe another color and then maybe take again you know it's it's a thing that you use it like yeah too many times and that's how now that's how eventually you start building up your own visual language from those repetitive marks and then you might develop them they might get bigger or or more intricate um but they're still you you know wow really interesting i, I really like that well um <laughs> I guess it's, it's that thing uh -huh. of being really disciplined with your time. Um, so I I do, uh, I've tried sometimes to have part-time jobs uh, going alongside this, so there's not so much pressure on my artwork. Um, and that depends on sort of where, where I'm at as well or how much time I need, um, you know, in the, in the studio. But if I'm doing that, I just schedule my day. I, I get up, I get up really early and um, paint before work or, or before whatever I'm doing that day and then I have uh, I'm quite strict with uh, my time I have certain time blocks um, I'm quite organized with that and I schedule in all the admin things that need to be done or if I'm working to a release date so like I've just released a collection of work last week um, I try to organize myself so I know how many weeks I need and then how how much time I need to paint, how much time I need to promote it, how much time I need for photography. Um, so then I'd usually work backwards and then I know, know how much time, when I need to start it and when I can finish it. <laughs> I think it's just being as, on the business side, it's definitely being as organised as you can be and um, planning and scheduling and things. And also what I said um, earlier in the conversation about not waiting for the inspiration to come and take you and like mm -hmm. tap you on the shoulder i think we if you continue to just show up in your studio and practice and practice even if you just you know just do something to start you off eventually i think our brains naturally go in and we're not waiting for this inspiration anymore we're just going to go even if we need a longer time to warm up and do some mark making um I think you can start to like cut your time down of actual painting. The more you get to know your practice, the more you get, you don't need necessarily hours and hours and hours. So you can, you know, gauge the time that you could probably give yourself a shorter amount of time painting. So then you can have this amount of time on admin or, you know, um, it's just, it doesn't sound very creative really, but, um, Sometimes I think giving ourselves limitations, especially especially for me, if I know I've only got a 30 minutes to paint or an hour to paint, I'm much more brave with the marks I make. Um, if I think I've got hours and hours, I'm probably there like just making small marks. But if I know I'm on short time, I'm straight in there making some bold moves. And often they're the ones that look the most confident and this you know the strongest elements so sometimes the time limitations are good <laughs> <laughs> well in that i'm i'm like that you know um because i thought the same okay inspirations come but of course need you you know you need being working you know so for me it's are in the same line because creativity as you said something happened in your brain and then start to to work more, no? So I believe, I believe, yes, yes. It came and you're, I, you're getting this I think that's the flow. good thing about keeping, 
Yes, yeah. And keep lots of notebooks as well, because on the times where you can't paint and you have to do, I don't know, do the household chores or go out to work or whatever, just keep a notebook and keep writing them down. And then you might go back to them, you might not but at least it's out of your mind and you if it goes somewhere i think every action we take or every move we make it's just another step you know just to, it keeps adding to our practice um and it's just you you just start living in in that way so you yeah get lots of ideas and then you know. i thought it's that it's it's a living away you know it's it's a, it's a way of life you yes. know and I always said, like, we are, or we do, like, the things that really we are, you know? And it, it's a peer with the time. Of course, mm -hmm. if you are a passionate person, mm -hmm. of course, you can feel it in your artwork and then in a very nice conversation and then uh, when you cook and, like, in everything, you no? Know? Yeah. So uh, for an artist, I thought that's a way of life. <laughs> yeah, you're, you, you're right, actually, because if I think, about when I cook as well it's still it's still a creative process you know um and I really enjoy watching all the bright colors of the veg in the pan and you know so it's still it's it, we just bring that apply the creativity to many areas of our life um yeah and the process has you know the all, complete process has the funniest part I thought it's everything no because it's it's the process but then when you show it and then you you share with the others you feel this joy you no know, inside like this warm thing so in art i thought it's the same you no know? yeah. when you buy some tools you know art supplies or canvases or colors and then you start to work on it like with so emotion <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it and i love I it as when i go to a a place to hang up my my artwork no and then i don't know if it happened the others but i thought yes like when you put it on the wall and then with the lights on it and you saw it and you say yeah. wow who made it <laughs> and then you say i know how i don't know <laughs> yeah, <it was> really. <laughs> um, yeah no you're, you're right it's brilliant um i thought um uh, one uh, one master here in Mexico, you know, huge master. I had the honor to talk with him, and he was telling me that I love exhibitions. Yo, yes, because it's like a party. And he was telling me, yes, you know, it's like my birthday. Like everybody comes to see us and the things that we make. So I love it. And I say, yes, that's that's really nice. And he said something really interesting. Like, and then. It's when uh, you ask for your wishes birthday, you know? You saw your artwork and then you share it, but not just in your mind with you. You share it with all the people who is there because they are, look at you, you know, besides your work. You know? How do you control that emotion? Yeah, that's, that's, when I've uh, held exhibitions, it is quite a surreal experience because you're so used, you know, you've spent hours and hours and weeks and weeks in your studio with these paintings and they become, you know, they're, they're sort of a part of you, aren't they? You know, you, you've spent this time and then and when you kind of go and hang them, like you say, and then people come and they talk to you about them, it's, it's, it's a very personal experience and um, talking about them almost... Uh, I don't know, it brings it to life even more because you've sat with all the thoughts in your mind, all your notebooks and things. And then when you're actually discussing it with somebody, um, yeah, and you can't help but to want to tell them about it. Um, but then there's also that thing of how much, how much do you want to tell them or give away? I know when I was, um, you know, a few, going back a few years, I don't think I was... Uh, I definitely wasn't as confident as I am now in, in talking about my work. And I used to be quite shy about, um, especially if it was really personal, if the inspiration was really personal or the subject, um, because then I thought, one, I didn't, I felt quite vulnerable in 
you know, telling people, well, this is about this. And also, I think it's nice for the viewer to, um, especially when looking at abstract art, I think it's really nice for them to take their own, uh, what they need at the time they take from that painting. You know, people will say, oh, it makes me feel this, or I can see this. And so sometimes I don't like to um, give my story away too much because it's, it sort of takes away their own experience of it, you know, if I influence too much. So it depends. Some, some buyers and some viewers of your work want to know all about you and the inspiration behind it. And I think others take from it what they need in their lives at the, at the time. They, they lose maybe their own story with your artwork, no? It's, yeah, in, in, in my case, sometimes it's the same, no? But I mm -hmm. thought y your words was like completely true. Um, uh, have you heard about Brené Brown? Mm -hmm. Okay, she's talking about that, no? The, from the Burley and then talks about brave and everything. And um, I say, yes, when you, get this confident, as you said, and now you expose yourself with your artwork. It's scary in the beginning. No, for me, it mm. take me, it takes me a long time to, yeah. to accept that, no, and then to walk on it and say, okay, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> no. But I thought... But, don't you find, mm -hmm. do you find though, after that point, because I, I felt a bit like that, and earlier this year, um, I started uh, on Instagram, you know, the 100 day project. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I, I started one with a, a friend uh, called the, the Artist Journals, and that was our 100 day project. And the Artist Journals was all about uh, being more open and honest in your work and being able to talk about it. And at first I was really apprehensive because some of the things were quite deep and personal. And, uh, um, but after I'd, uh, ex after a few days and I was uh, explaining some things, you know, that, that were about the paintings, I felt really, really liberated. Um, at the time when they went out, I was like, oh God, you know what, I've said too much or, uh, but I, then I thought, well, this is me. You know, this is this is what I'm doing. This is who I am. This is my artwork. And do you know the amount of engagement that came back off Instagram um, through that through my uh, comments and, and posts? It was it was phenomenal. The amount of engagement and people really relating to the stories um, and just saying, "I've experienced that, and I know how you feel." And, and so it's just that shared, just being very open, and then. I just felt, well, there you go. <laughs> and it was really liberating. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, I thought, I was talking in another, uh, in another art talk with Heidi Thompson, you know, and um, mm -hmm. she was telling us like, yes, when it's a, a true work and comes from deep of you, of course it's like that. But yes, you show yourself. And then for me, even these, you know, these art talks starting to get even my fame with me in Instagram, because it's not a class, it's I show some, some stuff that how I do, you know, it was really hard. But then I start to feel like more with me and I show how I am. You no, know? yes, this is my work, how I do, and this is me. You know? And um, of course, you receive uh, excellent comments and wonderful things, but also the others, no? And when I read those and I say, well, I do it like this, because maybe like, so looks so easy, but takes me so long. Yeah. <laughs> no? And then the courage to put it a start and then start to do it and then to show them. But yeah. yes, I am. I'm like this. <laughs> and I think sometimes it's um it's nice to show your process because there's there is so much that goes on behind the scenes and you know, it's like all your decision making uh for every single inch of the painting. So it's not just you know, oh I'm just throwing that there or throwing that. You're mm. you're contemplating so many things. So sometimes I think 
doing the process videos and talking about it allows the viewer to, to um, learn a bit more about your thought process, um, mm -hmm. how the pen can be like that, why you've chosen this and you know, so um, yeah, I need to do more process videos. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I was thinking, okay, I show the process, the handly process, no? Mm -hmm. But maybe I cannot show, or I don't know how to do it, the, the completely brain process and the completely feeling process. I love meditation and I do it, I try to do it every day. And I discover stuff about myself. And I said, sometimes I try to, to explain it, but you show me your, your notebooks and I have mine. <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to sleep. No? And then, <laughs> I have an idea, and I put it in. <laughs> I know. Everything. <laughs> I have notes everywhere. And I say, okay. Then I go to pick it up, all my post-its, and then a thousand of um, notebooks, no? And maybe I, I show a part in, in, in Instagram, a process, a one part, you know? Because the other came, as you say, with life, with an experiences, no? Do you have this illusion around, uh, in your collections? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it's noticed, like people can note your, your sadness, your happiness, your passion on it. I thought, yes, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's surprising that the, I mean, we can't, when you've got all these post-it notes and pieces of paper everywhere, we just, it's so much information and that's why you have to just pick bits. But if you look back on your work, you can start to see some threads of, oh, I thought of that. Like, it might be two years ago, but something might come up now that you're exploring that you've probably not even remembered that. But you know what we spoke about earlier and we're saying, our natural instincts and what we're drawn to are within us. So these ideas, I don't think they really leave us. We just put them on the shelf here and there, and then it might come back in another way. Or So it's just like you say, it's an evolution, and these things just come back to us and we develop and grow. Um, it's, it's, a really, it's a beautiful process, really. <laughs> yes, I thought the same. And... Um... Do you have uh, some recommendations for, for new artists, like uh, the beginners of, of them? Could you recommend? So, I would say um, show up every, if you can, every day, or if not, just regularly. I would say showing up even for 10 or 15 minutes more regularly is better for your practice than doing a whole day every month because it's um, mm -hmm. I treat my practice almost like a journal you know how you journal every day it's your thought process so if I try and paint every day it comes down to my mark making processes and I can build and build so I'd say more regular is, is better even for short amounts of time and um, I'd also I know it's it's hard because we judge ourselves and we compare ourselves but I would really say just don't worry at all when you're first starting out just just be enthusiastic about your own practice and be curious um, about your uh, cultivating your own marks and colors um, you know look outside for inspiration and what other people are doing because that's how we learn but don't get caught up um, you know there's always going to be people ahead of you and there's always people behind you and I think just mm -hmm. trust in yourself that you are exactly where you're meant to be I know that's quite cliched but um, <laughs> I think it's important to you understand and accept where you are today because tomorrow it might be different and the next day so there's there's no point in putting that pressure on, our, on ourselves um, you know Excellent. Did you um, did you make some uh, meditation before, or exercises, or maybe some uh, draws before start, just to you know get in this this move? 
Um, so when um, a, a while back, when I first started uh, sort of really paying attention to my painting practice, it was probably about three years ago when I decided I was going to just solely focus uh, not not on all the other creativity, you know, the textiles and the clothes making. And I thought I'm just going to focus on painting. And I realised that I could come with lots of emotion and it would just go out onto the canvas and it could be uh, if I was feeling excited or I might have just uh, come in and be like high, high energy or, or, or sad or whatever. And then I thought, what if I came to this from a different headspace? So I, like you, I like to meditate and um i don't have a, a regular practice unfortunately but i realize that when i do meditate i can go to a different place and if i start a painting from that place it's very different to the other place of high emotion so i i got to a point where i could play with that um you know so if i wanted that painting to be a certain way then obviously i would be in that mind space first but I, I guess now, um, I don't really, because I'm, I suppose I understand my process a little bit more and I understand now I'm not just coming now from a place of emotion because I'm looking for more in my work now, um, especially this year. I, I've, I've been looking and really sort of going deeper into my practice to find out what I really want it to be. So... I don't really have any, you know, things that before painting any sort of rituals or meditations. Maybe um, some loose mark making. If I haven't painted for a while, like I've recently moved house um, and I have a home studio. So in the process of moving, I didn't paint for a good few months. And uh, wow, that was, it had a real impact. So when I started again, it was quite difficult, uh, it's quite challenging to get back into my regular practice. So I did various things, um, small collages, just like quick, not not too much pressure. Um, so things like that, I would try for quick exercises if I was not really, you know, feeling to go straight in. But I think the, the way I work in so many layers, you can almost have all those practices on the first few layers because you... I'm not precious at all about that. I'll just, just go with whatever I can write. I can scrape, scratch, you know, throw the paint at it, sort of thing, because all of that's going to be covered. So if I am feeling any tension or I'm not sure about something, I can still let all that go, even if it was on a, you know, a main piece um, as warm up exercises underneath the painting. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I have the, um, just, <laughs> just one more, because this is really interesting. Thank you. Did you have uh, some, some books that you want to recommend or do something? No? It's though to be brave and confident, no? Like more techniques or um, you need to go here to show your work or, I don't know, do something else. <laughs> Because so, I mean, I do have I have lots and lots of books, but I'm not. Um, I'm, they're all on my reading list. Um, okay. So Maybe. I guess uh, I always listen to. I've always got something on in the background, an audio book or uh, podcasts. Um, one of my favourite podcasts at the moment, which I can mention, um, is Art Juice. Um, okay. It's run by. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's uh, Alice Sheridan and Louise Fletcher, who are two uh, British artists in the UK. And it's all, it's, it's just, just so relatable every week. It comes out on a Tuesday and they talk everything from uh, oh, numerous things. They're on about 70 something episodes, but it covers mindset, it covers um, working as a professional artist, you know, going to get your work into the gallery. Thanks, Dan.
identifying your practices, how you work best, and all these things. Most of the things, yeah. Most of the things are around self development. I'd say that I listen to and that keep me motivated, focused, um, basically just you know keep me on track. Um, otherwise, if I was looking at artists, it would be somebody like like Bombay. everything, the books, of course, the podcast, to have some news. So, later then, I'm going to afford to tell you. But, um, of course, uh, I'm going to share this with the uh, followers. And then, uh, one when I think so much for this uh, wonderful talk, I, I want to give you a time. I know we have six hours of difference. And Thank you so much for us. And I'm going to share all these wonderful products that we are sharing. Well, thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed chatting to you. Oh, I really enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs>